I think, Spencer, are we good on the webcast? Yeah. Okay. All right, well, thanks everyone for coming. Um, I'd be curious, just a show of hands, who's heard of CBD? Okay. Isn't that funny that we laugh about that, but maybe two years ago, how many have you heard of CBD? One, two, three, four, five, see? So that's what we're seeing as a phenomena, basically, across the United States and across the globe. So we all kind of have a story about how we ended up working in cannabis, uh, ended up investing in cannabis, ended up you know, educating ourselves about this quote unquote industry, uh, which a few years ago, I don't even know if anyone would have considered an industry. Um, so pretty incredible the way that things are moving. Uh, I myself was introduced to this space almost 10 years ago. Uh, I made a small investment in a company that was doing the very first extractions in cannabis in North America. Uh, it was a California-based company. And uh, it was a very different world back then. It would have been very hard to imagine the way that things have progressed. Um, and I have, over the course of the last 10 years or so, worked in almost every facet of this industry, uh, many states, many countries, uh, many businesses. And, um, and I kind of boiled all of that experience down into what I thought was the single greatest opportunity uh, in this market, um, and certainly the greatest opportunity I think I'll have in my lifetime, uh, and that has become uh, Hemp Fusion. And so one of the things that really drove me to Hemp Fusion, uh, and Hemp Fusion is one of the leading CBD supplement brands across the United States. Uh, we're sold in about 3,400 retailers. Yeah. Really sure. What is hemp Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, no, that's a great, great uh, question, actually, and that's uh, part of what I'm going to get into um, right here. But I think I can talk, you know, just directly to the differences. So, hemp or industrial hemp, as the regulatory uh, name of it would be, is a uh, agricultural commodity crop. It's been, it's been in use for over 10,000 years. It's predominantly used for food, fiber, seed, oil. Uh, people make paper and plastics from it. Um, it's, it's an incredible cramp, uh, uh, plant. It grows in almost every single environmental condition. Completely legal. Completely legal. 40 states, or sorry, 50 states, 40 countries. Uh, it's, it's widely grown across Europe, Eastern Europe, China, uh, and also Canada, which is one of the world's largest uh, producers. So um, quickly touching on a few components of that. So uh, hemp, as industrial hemp, is generally registered as cultivars. Now in Canada, I think there's 14 or 15 cultivars that are registered with Health Canada. That's what can be grown in Canada. In Europe, it's a similar process. Now in the United States, it's a rapidly evolving industry. And a lot of what they call hemp is actually hybridized marijuana. So, so there's very blurred lines in what's different. Now, that's from the actual plant's perspective. From the industry perspective, uh, hemp and marijuana couldn't be more different. Uh, hemp is, is, a, is a product that we're able to take, like I said, into 40 countries, 50 states, um, without the regulatory barriers of the state by state or, or you know, constantly changing uh, landscape of the THC cannabis world. Uh, and, and that was part of my experience in this industry, was for the first few years doing consultancies around the United States, I realized this is almost impossible to grow uh, a serious business in this condition. They, they change the laws and regulations uh, every six months. Um, the, uh, the lack of access to things like banking, merchant processing, uh, debt financing, I mean, just critical factors to grow a business were not available uh, in the THC marijuana side of the world. Meanwhile, we have uh, a, a hemp-based product that has none of the baggage of THC. We're not worried about little children eating too many gummies, which is you know, something I was always terrified about, that this industry would end up with the worst name ever, um, when it's actually an incredible therapeutic product. So we had this, this really incredible, um, this incredible convergence of the fact that we had a non-psychoactive uh, compound that was having all kinds of incredible testimonials ripping across both the web, both the web and huge publications. There was multiple specials on CNN. This uh, this incredible consumer consciousness around this product, um, combined with the fact that we could use the real levers of a mass market economy, so distribution, uh, tens of thousands of retailers, uh, systems that are already in place that bring consumer products to people across the United States and across the world 
all of a sudden we can use towards a plant that is technically quote unquote cannabis, because both hemp and marijuana are technically cannabis sativa. Um, so just an incredible opportunity that, that allowed us to scale a business in a way that we would have done any traditional consumer packaged goods company uh, and, and not having to really jump over every single hurdle uh, and roadblock that's in front of marijuana. So um, it's, they keep revising these numbers up, but right now it's 22 billion by the year 2022. Uh, right now there, is, uh, there was a poll that came out, a Gallup poll, so you know, well-known polling. Uh, where 14% of the United States is now using CBD. Uh, we couldn't have imagined that two years ago. Two years ago, I'd walk into buyer's meetings with major uh, buyers across the United States that had no idea what we were selling, no idea what the product was. They thought we were selling them drugs or something. Um, and now all of a sudden, every single one of these major retailers wants an end cap. They want a, they want a full uh, set display, uh, and the entire environment is changing. So. Um, that's, that's where we are with CBD and with hemp. Uh, it's incredibly exciting. Um, the organization we've built is uh, you know, really kind of on the cutting edge of everything that's happening here, and it's, it's really a daily, um, you know, daily basis. Things are changing. Sorry. Is CBD the non one? Yes, so that, that's... Right. So very interesting, you know, it's, these are the types of questions we deal with on a daily basis, right? Uh, so is CBD the non-psychotic one? I think you mean psychoactive, but psychotic also. Um, so yes, yeah, CBD has no known psychoactive uh, properties. Um, there it's, there's significant research into the therapeutic benefits of it, but I would say the growth in anecdotal and consumer use of it is rapidly outpacing the actual research. So the research over the next three to 10 years is gonna catch up with where the market is. Um, the fact is, is this is a product that's growing so quickly, primarily because of word of mouth. It's working for people, they're telling their friends and family, they tell their friends and family. Um, you know, that's the original viral, right? So that's, exactly, for the medicinal part of it. There's no other reason that you would use this. It's not a, it's not a party drug, so. Um, so in, in really looking at how do we access this market, uh, you know, we identified a, a market of almost 26,000 stores that we were targeting with our products. It's a full line of, um, of products, topicals, ingestibles, capsules, all kinds of things. And one of the most critical components to this entire um, industry is regulatory compliance. So we have to be compliant with the FDA under DSHEA, Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act, which regulates all supplements, really the difference between a pharmaceutical and a supplement or a food. Uh, grass affirmation, which we, have, uh, which we have pending now, which has been over a year-long process for us, toxicology studies, um, which is generally regarded as, as safe, which is gonna be a critical component in the FDA's regulation of this industry. And then, of course, everything that we have manufactured is, uh, is uh, fully NSF, ISO 9000, GMP, we're a CFR 111 uh, label and distributor, which means we have every process in place for a recall. Um, our warehouses are entirely compliant with every uh, GMP um, requirement by the FDA. Uh, so this was absolutely critical as far as being taken seriously, being able to walk into large retailers and show them that we have a full book of compliance that's going to keep their customers safe, that's going to keep their regulatory council happy. Yeah. I asked a question. Sure. Uh, is C uh, CBD, right? Sorry? CBD. Huh? CBD, yeah. CBD, is that used to uh, number of uh, epileptic seizures in children or Yeah, so uh, there is a, a drug called Epi Epidiolex, uh, or Epidolex, however you say it, um, which was actually studied for that exact purpose. It was a, a reduction in childhood uh, epilepsy seizures. Um, so as a supplement or a food, you're not able to make a claim on a product the way that a drug can, right? A drug is multiple years, many tens or hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars to prove that this exact dosage of this exact thing is for this uh, purpose. Now, as a supplement, that research exists in and around the molecule, but we would not be able to make that claim uh, on a food or, or a supplement ingredient. What about the, I think I remember hearing about marijuana oil called Charlotte's Web. I think that would be the yep. that would prove it's acceptable in, not, in not reducing the, in reducing the number of epileptic seizures in children. Right, yeah, so I'm just going to slightly repeat this stuff so everyone can hear it. Um, so yeah, so CNN ran three specials on a, a strain uh, of, it was a, a hemp and, and marijuana hybrid plant that they called Charlotte's Web. 
that was successfully reducing seizures in epilepsy patients. CNN uh, and Sanjay Gupta uh, ran a series of specials on exactly that. Now, even Charlotte's Web is not able to claim that they are able to reduce seizures in epilepsy patients without having completed full clinical studies. Um, but yes, the, the anecdotally, that is what's happening in the industry. Uh, they've completed the initial studies on epidolics, yes. I see. What were the results? Positive. It is, it's now an OTC product in the United States. I see. So it's, in, so it's available in the United States, but it's not available in Canada? Um, it's not available in Canada, that's correct. GW Pharma. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. So that's the in progress. I can come back and touch up on that in a, in a minute. Um, you know, so, so some of the components here are. Um, as I mentioned, constantly evolving <coughs> regulatory environment. So uh, my co-founding partner, Jason Mitchell, he ran one of the largest supplement companies in the United States called Country Life. Um, we also sit on the hemp round table. He chairs the uh, FDA subcommittee. Um, and this is something we're incredibly engaged and active in is how do you regulate this industry? Um, how should it be regulated? What is the timing? Uh, how do we ensure that consumers are getting a safe product, a transparent product? Um, you know, while, while also having, yeah, j just some type of access to this product other than the pharmaceutical reality. And, and we, and myself personally, we had a lot of opportunities to work with pharma companies, especially early on five years ago. And I just never saw that as a viable path because why would someone pay, you know, $1,000 a year, um, or sorry, like $100,000 a year for something that they could get for less than $1,000 a year, right? It's the exact same molecule, both derived from nature, from the same plant, a one available as a supplement, one available as a pharmaceutical. Um, this is effectively already, you know, generically available almost everywhere, so I just didn't see that play. Um, our choice was to really go after a trusted consumer brand and have it available in the places that people shop now. So that, that's been really our, uh, our focus with uh, Hemp Fusion. So, <laughs> After the regulatory compliance uh, was really evaluated, we had to put together a, a, a supply chain that was able um, to really show, you know, the the absolute kind of um, you know defining what compliance and what a uh, you know what a su supply chain should look like in an industry that is brand new and just evolving. So this is something we've been working on for five years. Uh, we have a full organic uh, certification, EU certified, uh, which for our hemp, which is grown in, in primarily in Eastern Europe. Um, we have a, a exclusive supply in the United States um, for this material, which we've completed grass affirmation on, which is all the toxicology, full organic certification. We test for heavy metal, pesticides, um, you know, all kinds of different components in the supply chain. Uh, it has to be able to scale, so you know we're able to produce almost 15 tons of this material a day. Um, so this is something that we're anticipating global demand for. Continue to grow this brand. We can do so um, with our current raw material suppliers. Really, uh, the sky's the limit there. Uh, and then of course sustainability, and um, and really bringing nature into a bottle is kind of our focus. It's it's how do we keep uh, all of these molecules as close to the way they're found in nature as possible through our entire process all the way uh, to a customer. Uh, and that's something that we've really uh, focused on as a brand. Um, it's a lot of our story that we tell out there in the world and it's a lot of the magic that we have uh, in the plant. Um, we have a 20,000 square foot facility uh, in Poland where this um, extraction is done. This is, a, this is our partners. It's actually a, a, you know, it's a really incredible uh, facility. I don't think there's anything like it in North America right now. Um, and this is, uh, you know, how we're able to scale this business. Uh, so this is just some of our products. Um, so we have products that initially started with uh, capsules. So these were vegan liquid fill capsules. We did a full spectrum of omegas, 3, 6, and 9, which supports the endocannabinoid system. Uh, terpenes, which is something that, uh, um, you know, is a, it works with the same receptor system, the CB2 receptor system. And, um, and we've now branched into liquids, the twist products, which people put in smoothies, they put in ice cream that tastes great. Uh, we've moved into topical products, um, beverages under development, meal replacement powders. So these, this is a full set of products that any major retailer can walk in, you know, can really put on their shelves, and their customer is going to have every single thing 
um, that they're looking for in this category. And so we really paired the, the complete product offering with the regulatory compliance component, and that's how we're able to, to really get into some of the larger retailers we've been able to uh, move into. So distribution, this is expanding really on a daily basis. Uh, over 60 sales reps and brokers. Um, we have two distribution centers uh, and our head, uh, headquarters in Denver. So distribution in Atlanta, Georgia, and in um, Kansas City. Um, so this is, as we expand, we're moving from natural grocery, which is a very traditional way to grow a consumer packaged goods business of a new ingredient. Uh, so moving from natural grocery uh, into conventional grocery, and then that eventually moves into big box drugs and convenience. We also have a full practitioner line. Um, overall, we're anticipating about a 26,000 store uh, pipeline uh, in the next 12 months or so. Um, internationally, there's some pretty significant opportunities out there. Uh, the UK being an immediate uh, target focus for us. We have a fantastic distributor there. Um, Europe as a whole, um, Australia we have uh, in progress right now. Um, one of our subsidiaries, uh, Probulin, which is one of the fastest growing probiotics companies in the US, uh, is expanding into South Korea um, across the Middle East as well. Um, so yeah, a lot of opportunity here. Uh, it's also very uh, ripe for acquisitions. Um, CBD is, is something that is um, it says CBD is something that is, is moving so quickly. A lot of people see this opportunity. And, uh, and just the same way we saw in cannabis in California, Colorado, people rushed into the space, um, overextended in, in, in many cases. Hundreds of companies popped up over a, a, a year or two years. 80% uh, of them uh, run into trouble. Um, so for us, we're a well-capitalized com company. We've been moving very quickly. We had one of the dominant uh, early mover you know, positions in this entire industry. We're the second product on shelves uh, in national retail. And, um, and at this point, we continue to expand, and we're going to kind of sit back and wait for some opportunities uh, in the M&A front as well. So we're a privately, com uh, privately held company. Uh, we are moving towards an IPO. Um, I have uh, Spencer and Hunter here. Uh, Hunter in the front, Spencer in the back, if you raise your hand. Um, yeah, these fellows have uh, additional information, so moving quickly towards an IPO, and, and if you get on our email list, they'll keep you in touch. Sorry? Uh, we're moving in that direction now, so it's, it's effectively determined that we will be. Uh, we're working on prospectus and all that, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. I wanted to know, I, I saw on your map where you're expanding and all that, selling and all that, I just noticed that there's no venture out there. Uh, yeah, I think that would be premature for us right now. It's not in the 24-month plan. Um, the way that we would enter Africa would be through OTC products and pharmacies. Um, so I think you know, this market is, is growing fastest in the United States, second fastest in Europe, and you know, I expect it to grow worldwide. So it's not within 24 months. Okay, so but yeah. it's still in the pipeline. Sure, absolutely. Can you tell us about your revenues and financial uh, I can't, but these gentlemen will need to follow up with you uh, on that. So we're in the middle of putting all that together. So we're in a quiet period? We're in a quiet period, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Go ahead. Do I need any special licenses or permits to sell CBD products to farmers? Um, in Canada or the United States? Canada. Um, in Canada, yes. So Canada has a, actually, ironically, a very tightly controlled regulatory environment around CBD. Uh, my understanding is that it is right now moving through the same channels that licensed marijuana would be moving through. Um, that may change, but uh, yeah, our primary focus is in the United States because it's such a quickly growing market. Um, it is, as long as you're compliant with uh, you know, several different components. So yeah, it's registered industrial hemp, uh, all of your testing has to be clean. Um, yeah, there's a lot of different components that go into regulatory in the U.S., but yes, uh, all 50 states currently, as long as you're in compliance with all the state law. Go ahead. Do you have corporate information available on the website? Uh, yeah, on the website we do. It's uh, hempfusion.com. A lot of great product information. Um, we also have these two pagers here, which summarize a lot of the information about the, uh, the company. Um, 
Spencer and Hunter will be able to get these out to you too. Uh, and then of course, if you want to go in and register with the website, we'll keep you in the loop. Um, yeah, it'd be hard for me to comment directly on that, but soon. So your focus is CBD infused hemp. Yeah, so CBD is one of the molecules in hemp. So we take what, what we call a full spectrum or a panoramic spectrum hemp extract of which CBD is one of about 24 different molecules in that extract, which forms the basis of all of our products. Yeah, so, so CBD we, we call a hero ingredient, but, uh, but it's not the only one. That's true, yeah. Um, I, time's up over here, but I guess last comment on that would be, you know, we talk about that the same way that, um, vitamin C differs from an orange. So 50 years ago, they would synthesize vitamin C and attribute all these incredible benefits to it. Uh, 30 years ago, they're like, oh, wait a second, actually you need bioflavonoids and these other cofactors. And then as this entire thing has progressed, we've gone right back to, you know what, you should probably just eat the orange. And, and so that's exactly what we see happening in this market. They synthesized CBD. They thought that was the most amazing here ingredient. And all of a sudden, we're seeing that in far lower dosages, as long as you have all the other cofactors, it's far more effective. And so we, it's the same story all over again. That's the story we tell with our products. So yeah, unfortunately, I think my time's up. These guys are uh, giving me signs, but thanks all for coming. Really appreciate it. And uh, again, Spencer, Spencer and Hunter, and then of course we have a booth right at the front of the show. Uh, as soon as you walk in the door, it's on the left, uh, Hemp Fusion. Come and find us for more info. Thanks everyone. Thank you.